Let's talk about the latest Xbox game, The Medium. All right, so if you could do me a huge favor and leave a like for this video because YouTube sucks and it's actually gonna be filtering out the search results for this game. So if you do a search for the medium and then you filter the results by upload date, you're not gonna see a ton of different YouTube channels that have less than 20,000 subscribers. It just, they just totally are omitted from the search results. So if you could help out the algorithm a little bit and give it a thumbs up, I'd really appreciate it. First off, the game sucks. It sucks really bad, which, is something I didn't want to say. I didn't want to make this video saying these things, but I'm just gonna have to do it because I was really looking forward to the medium because it kind of reminded me of Silent Hill 2. It's just a good third person survival horror game with some psychological elements. I was really looking forward to it. And now that I've played it, I wish I had it. It's not all bad though. There are some good things about it and I'm gonna go over those things now. So the graphics and the sounds are good. They serve the purpose well, they look good, they sound good. The voice acting is also surprisingly good. They weren't given really good material to work with, but the voice actors and actresses did a good job with what they had. The Akira Yamaoka soundtrack is good. I don't know if he did all the songs in the game or just a few tracks, but the ones that I recognized as being from him were good. They weren't like Silent Hill 2 good, but they were decent. They did the job well and I enjoyed them for what they were. Now it's on to the bad stuff. I personally thought the story and the characters are very uninteresting. Like from the moment I started playing all the way up until the first hour, two hours, three hours, I'm just like, let's just get it over with. Let's get on with it. I didn't have any interest in the characters and I wasn't invested in the story. I just wanted it to be over as soon as possible, which is completely not what you want with a horror game. You want the characters to be interesting. You want the situation and you want the story to be interesting. Like Silent Hill 2, for example, even though that game came out many, many years ago, long before the medium came out, immediately it pulled you in because you get a letter from your dead wife to go to Silent Hill, and that's like, wow, how did this even happen? I need to find out more. But in this game, it's just like, there's no incentive to continue. It's just like, hey, some guy calls you and says, come meet me over here, and then you go over there, and then you find out more about your past. It's just... It's not interesting at all, and it didn't turn out to be a very good investment. The dialogue is also terrible in this game. As you may have noticed if you watched my previous video with the F-bombs of the medium, it's just overly done. They try to throw in the F-bomb so many times just to make it seem more intense and more scary and more adult-themed or whatever it is. It just, it sounds terrible. It doesn't sound natural, and I ended up laughing every single time they used the F word in dialogue. It just sounds stupid and unnatural. Like nobody talks like that. Come on now. I have some other issues with the game as well from a developer or from a game design standpoint. Uh, one of them being the fact that you acquire two items near the beginning of the game, which is the bolt cutters and the razor blade. You use these two items throughout the entire game multiple times. It's not like most games where it's like, oh, I, I have to, you know, cut through these chains to unlock this door to get to the next room you do that and then you do it again and 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 it never friggin ends same thing with the razor blade you use it to cut down some flesh it's like human skin but it exists in the spirit world which is outside of the physical realm but somehow skin is still there it just doesn't make any sense it's just stupid and you cut through these little skin barriers multiple times throughout the game. It's not like they have different applications like, oh, well, now I'm going to cut through some skin. And then later on in the game, I'm going to cut through some like leather or just something weird, something different. You never you never get that experience. It's just the same thing over and over and over again. And it's completely pointless. Like why make the player go through the same motions repeatedly? Another thing that's bad about this game is that for me personally, the game broke. I actually died during one of the few segments in the game where you can actually be killed. And then whenever I tried to retry and continue and try again, the game just took me to a black screen and nothing else. It just didn't let me progress. I had to start the whole game over, which I, I decided not to do. I didn't want to start the entire game over and replay the last like hour and 20 minutes. So I just watched a YouTube video of a gameplay playthrough of the entire game for the remainder of the game just to see what happens. Because I know at that point, after an hour and a half of playing, the game probably wouldn't get much better in terms of the way it played. Anyways, here's a video of that occurring. I 
I found the split reality mechanic to be very annoying. So on one side you have the physical world and on the other side you have the spirit world. And it seemed like a pretty cool mechanic, a pretty cool idea at first, but in actuality and practicality, it's not a very good mechanic because to me personally, it totally broke the immersion. It was like, yep, I'm playing a video game whenever I see two different worlds and they're side by side. It's almost like looking at an interactive spot the differences picture is really annoying and I just didn't care for it at all. I would almost rather if they had like 100% all or the other or maybe a button to switch between the two. That'd be kind of cool to switch between the physical and the spiritual world, but make it take up the entire screen. It just seemed like a kind of a cheap excuse to label it as a next gen title for it to render two worlds simultaneously. I didn't find anything impressive about it at all. But yeah, there's no threat of death from monsters. There's like no enemies. That's one thing that I really dislike about pretty much all the Bloober Team titles is that uh, there's really no threat of death. There's, there's no enemies that are gonna kill you. You don't have to worry about, oh man, at any second something dangerous could occur and I'm gonna have to like run for my life, or fight for my life. You never really get that feeling. There are parts of the game where there's certain enemies that are static and they are only a threat because you walk into them, but then you just press and hold like one button to fend off their attacks. It requires no strategy whatsoever. Other parts in the game are what we call boss battles or boss encounters rather, where you're either doing a, a stealth, you're trying to hide from this person, there's entity, and it's really annoying doing so because your character moves so slowly. Even the run is kind of like a light jog. You would think if there's like imminent danger, you'd be running a little bit faster. So it was just kind of stupid. And one of the main enemies of this game is supposed to be really scary and kind of unsettling, but I find it very comical. <laughs> kind of looks like a mix between Slender Man, the Predator, and that flying thing from House of the Dead 2. Suffer my G Dad. So at this point, I'm just gonna give it a three out of 10. A three out of 10, that's my final score. And the only reason it got that high is because of the few good things that I did mention at the very beginning of this video. And honestly, I shouldn't have gotten my hopes up so high for this game. Just because of Bloober Team's previous track record, all of their games have managed to be either terrible or mediocre. There's nothing higher than that. None of their games have really jumped out and redefined the horror experience or being a breakaway title. They're all just kind of run of the mill standard stuff. But that's all I got for this video. I almost didn't even want to make this video, but I wanted to make sure that people knew what I thought about this game because I was looking so forward to it and I felt obligated to make this video and share my thoughts. Uh, honestly, I would not buy this game. Personally, at $60, I think it's way overpriced. It's not worth it. It's not fun. It's not good. It's not a good horror game. It's just not a good game, period. The, the mechanics are bad. The dialogue's bad. It's, I, just, I can't. If you can find it on sale for like $10 or less, then maybe give it a shot. But I wouldn't pay more than that personally. But that's all I got. I don't want to make a bunch of negative videos because it just puts me in a bad mood. And I don't want to be in a bad mood. So thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you soon.